this video is going to be an initial setup of the super smart feed uh, the first thing I want to do is kind of walk around the unit point out some uh, components that make this unit up and we'll get in more detail as we walk around uh, the first thing I want to talk to you about is um, <clears throat> the towing mechanism we have um, we do rate this at 40 miles an hour uh, it's a 2 and 5 16 inch ball type hitch uh, two safety chains we have a locking uh, latch for your hitch this is your breakaway uh, for your trailer brakes and on the other side is your connection your seven pin connection uh, to hook up to your truck it's just tucked back in there uh, we do have a jack up front these come included with the unit and there are two of them they'll always be stowed in the battery box so the first big thing you're going to notice when you're looking at the front of this unit are your alleyways uh, we're going to go into more detail on how to um, take them out of the stowed position put them down adjust them and secure them a couple other things you'll notice up here are your tray designations you have tray one tray two and in the back of the unit is tray three and tray four these are your individual dishes um, so this hopper is actually divided into four bins um, so this would be bin two bin one so on and so forth uh, a couple things you're going to notice this tray actually sits on a load cell so we can measure if there's any feed in the dish itself this panel here behind it actually attached at these points is your RFID antenna so it's going to read the EID as the animal approaches the unit this sensor here is your proximity sensor and it can tell the distance that the animal is away from the dish and if you look back here these are your adjustable doors for your feed and these will have to be adjusted each time uh, you use a new feed type and for initial um, calibrations and you can see we have indicators indicating one two and three three would be fully open to open it all you have to do is release this t-handle you can pull your door up and push it down depending on what the density of your feed is and if you can look down in here there's a stainless steel cover and this cover is actually to keep birds from throwing food out and what that is so showing you now is the conveyor because this is a conveyor system a gravity fed conveyor system so as the motor moves it pushes feed into the dish and this cover is just to protect uh, any animals from getting in on all four corners uh, you have a stabilizer jack and we're going to go into more detail with that but these can be moved up and down with the same handle another thing of note these on each corner of the bin itself are load cells and um, all of them used together will give you a weight of feed that's in the bin moving on back we'll see a couple more things up top you can see your solar panel this is your uh, main electronics box this is houses all your electronic uh, control functions and I'm going to take this off these are thumb screws so you can use your hands to open it up please don't lose them This does have a rubber gasket, so it keeps it waterproof inside the box. These top ones are captive, so you'd have to pull pretty hard to get them out. You should never have to go into the electronics box unless there's an issue, so I just wanted to point out a few things. This is what actually reads your EIDs from the animal. This is your RFID board. This is also an RFID board, but this is a multiplexer. 
So this takes all four antennas and then communicates that information to your RFID board itself. You can notice here that our power light is blinking. If it's solid or blinking, that's good. When an EID is red, this uh, next right light, this read light, will flash green. And if there's ever a problem with the board itself, this service light at the top will have a solid red. Moving over, this is your cellular modem. This is a cell booster. So when we're way out in the pasture uh, and have weak cell reception, this will help get that connection to upload data to our server. This is our main circuit board. And it is where power runs in, fuses for all of your motors, your conveyor motors. Um, this is a Wi-Fi adapter that will not only hold data, but will transmit it wirelessly over Wi-Fi if you have that connection. We'll put that back up. Don't over tighten these. They don't need to be extremely tight for the seal to make contact to make a weather tight seal. One other thing before we move along any further, this is your uh, antenna that sends the cell signal to the modem and the booster. These are your connection points for your solar. I want to show you this amber light. This is indicating that the unit has power. This is housing all of your solar components. Uh, one thing right here is your AC port. So you can plug this into AC power using this port. This is just the vent cover. To open the box, it's just two latches on each side. Loosen the latch each side. Pull the cover up. Now this is going to house a few things and you will have to access this box. This is your um, AC controller. This is your solar charge controller. Down here you have a fuse. This is a low voltage cutoff. So if the voltage gets too low, it will shut power to the unit so we don't kill our batteries. And this is your main battery switch. Right now we can see that it's on. We see the green. But if I turn it off, then I'm not supplying any solar, but I'm not also not drawing any power from my battery. So to turn the unit on, flip this to green. Turn this on, and we know that we have power because my amber light up here by the electronics box is lit. And if I ever wanted to check the voltage of my batteries, I can always look right here. And I'm showing 13.4 volts. So I have good voltage coming out of my batteries. So I'll close that. Lock my latches down. Please always put the cover back on. Um, it's turned down for moisture to shed off so we don't get any moisture inside of this box. Um, the rear is pretty much the same as the front, except these jacks are manual. So we'll set these jack pads first and then we'll adjust our height for the other stabilizers. Uh, we're gonna talk about these extra chains and cables in the back and I'll show you why those are necessary. And then moving over to the other side, the two things of note, these are where you uh, lift your bin uh, cover to access the drop feed, and that's for your front and back. The, this box here houses your batteries. In here, you're going to see a couple things. Um, not only do they house the batteries, but all your wiring for your trailer lights are right here as well. 
Um, you can see there's another jack handle inside. And we've also started sending these out to clients. This restrictor plate uh, reduces the amount of feed that actually comes out of your conveyor. And so typically clients that are using the Super for cheap use this restrictor plate. So instead of doing maybe a one kilogram drop, it might only drop 100 grams. And that's, that's the goal, is to drop 100 grams out of this opening. So you'll have four of these. Um, the feed has to be emptied out of the bins and it simply drops into the bottom uh, of, the, of each bin. Close our box. Just a little down pressure. We like a nice tight seal. So next we'll go through positioning uh, of the unit itself. Uh, what's the correct positioning? Uh, making sure it's level and then we'll proceed into alleyways and a few other things.